Looking at Shannon Wall, you would never guess what she's been through. But as soon as she starts talking, you can see her pain. The young woman used to be the life of the party. Now she's a prisoner in her own home. It just kept punching me in the head. I've never been like, punched up in the head over and over and over like before. <laughs> Tonight, Shannon paints the picture of a life-changing few short hours and demasks the man who became a monster. This is her incredible story. We were together four years and for the first, well, most of it actually, he was quite, um, he was quite control, always controlling, but he never put his hands on me. Shannon's relationship with a young, handsome Mitchell Walsh was the envy of her friends. But soon, chilling clues of what lay ahead began to emerge. He would deadbolt the front door and carry the key around so I couldn't get out. Um, he'd like, lock me in rooms and he just isolated me from everybody. I didn't see my family or I was cut off flat from my friends. He just made it so that I had no options. I had nowhere to go even if I did want to leave. Eventually, the pressure of feeling captive became too much. Well, the night that I left for good. I had to message my mum quickly while he wasn't looking and ask her to call the police. And the police came and removed me from the house. Shannon thought she had left the terror behind and moved into a ninth floor apartment with her new boyfriend, Adam. But then one night, Mitchell contacted her to come and collect her belongings. He seemed all right over text message and I agreed to meet him at McIver train station at 7 p.m. that night. Adam was asleep when I left, so I just left. And I was just going there to get my stuff. Hey. Get in, come on, get in. When we got there, we went inside and he went to the kitchen and started pulling down the blind. And I was just standing up next to the couch and he walked over to me and told me to sit down. And I asked him why and he just punched me in the head here. <laughs> and I fell back on the couch and then he was on top of me with a knife on my face and saying, did you really think that I wouldn't hurt you? I knew what he was about to do and I looked at him in the eye and I said, please don't. And he just punched me in the side of the head again and pushed me down into the couch and got my bag strap out of my bag and used that to choke me and gag me. And that's when that's when he raped me. When that was over, he just pushed me away like and said, put your clothes back on. After I was dressed he we got in the car and he wanted to go to the apartment that I was living at with Adam. It was a terrifying drive through suburban streets as the man behind the wheel was hell-bent on revenge, armed with a 30-centimetre kitchen knife to harm her boyfriend, Adam. At the traffic lights, I looked at him and he punched me in the mouth. I just then my tooth chipped his hand and I just remember the blood like clinging everywhere. He asked me to text Adam, something that I would usually text him to say that I was going to come up because I didn't have my keys with me. And I didn't have a choice, but I tried to make message sound, like I tried to write it differently to how I usually would. But I, I had no way of warning Adam what was about to happen. He walked me across the road with a knife still to the building that we lived at in the buzzer and made me buzz up to our apartment. Adam answered and let, let us up once we got up to level nine, I had to knock on the door and he stood next to me, look, the door was here and then he stood here and I had the knife to my, to my side and I heard Adam coming and I can't really describe the feeling, <laughs> I didn't know, I couldn't warn him or anything, I thought he was about to, I thought like, he was going to get stabbed, you know, and so he opened the door and Mitch ran out from beside me and somehow Adam got him on the floor and they just started wrestling over this knife. During the vicious attack, Walsh sliced off a piece of Adam's toe. 
In a courageous act, Shannon grabbed a weapon of her own. I don't really know what was going through my head, but I ran, like, I ran out the door and I ran down the fire escape and I just ran out onto Terrace Road in front of, like, a van and waved my arms around for help and they called the police and I just sat, sat on the road until the police came. I don't think any girl or should have to put up with it. Any person, any human being. After a troubled relationship with her own dad, Dom has become a father figure to Shannon and is full of praise for the guts she showed that night. Shannon's Shannon, you know, she's just great, open, open-minded, open-hearted. She's, she's a great person. I like to think her friends and family would obviously tighten up and get a bit closer because of the situation and the incident. Mitchell had gone, had gone. gotten away. Gotten away. Yeah, he took, um, took my phone, took Adam's phone and a couple of other things and ran out the door. When the police came, they asked me what car he was driving and everything, and I told them and the address, and they caught him in his house, like, trying to hide things. Walsh was convicted on a string of charges, including armed robbery, aggravated assault occasioning actual bodily harm, deprivation of liberty, two counts of aggravated sexual assault, aggravated burglary, stealing, and assault occasioning actual bodily harm. The Supreme Court here in Western Australia sentenced Walsh to seven and a half years jail. However, he can walk free on parole in just four and a half. Meanwhile, his victim Shannon says she's been handed a life sentence of severe panic and anxiety attacks in the wake of her traumatic ordeal. It's so light, so and eligible for parole in four and a half years. Like. The last two years have been like torture for me and I guarantee it's going to take more of my life than that. The controversial sentence came at the end of a lengthy trial that forced Shannon to recount her torture under relentless cross-examination. At times during the trial did it feel like you were on trial? Yeah, from the, question, the questions they were asking me and the things they pulled out, a personal diary of mine that I'd kept even before we were together, it was and they were reading parts of it out in court. Two years on, Shannon has found love and trust again with Guy, her partner and pillar of support. We share the same bed and like, she wakes up screaming and I might just be going to the shop just to get some milk and she's like in hysterics. What did you make of the sentence being handed down? I don't agree with it, obviously, but it's the system, you know, it's, that's why I think we're doing this, you know, to try and see if we can change it for the future. It's hard for me to trust people or, or anything these days, so they're the only people I hold them very close to me. And they put up with me and everything that I'm going through now, so... No, I wouldn't use the word put up with you. <laughs> Pretty hard to deal with <laughs> these days. God, you want to give her a hug, man? I think she deserves a hug after that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? Terrible story. Mitchell Gregory Walsh will be eligible for parole in 2020.